Hey, good morning, everybody. My name is Junior, and I would like to welcome you all back to the Daily Digital. Today's date is Saturday, August the 27th, and today we have a wonderful show. We actually have something new that we're going to be doing today since this Saturday, and there's a lot of spectacular people in the world. I'm going to start pointing out some of those people that are doing some amazing things. doesn't really have to do with digital, but I mean, again, they are just doing amazing things in this world. I just want to shed light on them. The next thing that we're going to be talking about is going to be about movies. So people are getting back into the movie scene, going out to theaters and stuff like that. And one company, what actually launched back in 2017, is making this a whole lot more uh, ideal instead of just staying at home doing Netflix and chill. The next thing that we have about next thing that we have after that is going to be about tattoos. So tattoos are getting uh, a new uptake inside of the digital world. We also have pensions. So pensions are actually (laughs) coming into the digital world as well. You'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. And then the last thing is going to be colleges. So we have just started off or just about to start off in the fall semester for college. And a lot of people aren't going back to college in real life anymore. So we'll see how they're going to, uh, to access it. But before we do that, we're going to take a quick break and then we'll jump right into it. All right, welcome back, everybody. We are still live. We are still rolling. So I just want to go ahead and jump right into the first article for today. So the first thing that we're going to be talking about is something called Movie Pass. So Movie Pass actually came out in 2017, and they actually went out of business in 2020. I want to say 2020, 2021, before uh, they were bought out. I think one of the co-founders were bought out by the actual founder, and the actual founder is now relaunching it for 2022. But essentially, well, so first off, let me just say when you go to their website, this is what you'll see a countdown for two days now. Um, today, Saturday, so Monday, the new Movie Pass beta app will be accessible by invite only. The wait list will be closed when the timer reaches zero on Monday, August 29th by 11.59 p.m. or while inventory lasts. All who join the wait list will receive priority access to the service and 10 friend invites. Space is limited. Don't wait. Once the wait list is closed, the only way to join will be through an invite from a friend. So as you can see here, they have a section where you can actually join the wait list. So they can put your email in, put your zip code in, submit, make sure you hit the uh, I'm not a robot thing, of course, and then tell them if you're a former MoviePass member or anything like that. Um, and they got a, you know, a couple of links down there as well. But I came across this article here. That said, Movie Pass relaunched. Thirty thousand people sign up for waitlist in first five minutes. Wow, that is just amazing. People don't just sign up for stuff like that. Um, they also don't just sign up and actually break the website. So I believe in this article here. Um, when it's aired, so August twenty fifth is when this came out, and it says Thursday. Yeah, more than 30,000 people tried to join the waitlist Thursday for the relaunch of MoviePass, temporarily crashing the site. CEO Stacy Spikes told Insider and spokesperson confirmed to Forbes, suggesting renewed interest in the ticket subscription service that failed back in 2019. So, yeah, this was even before the pandemic was eight when it kind of failed. Uh, but so key facts. MoviePass's website was down for two and a half hours because the company claimed it had high traffic. Though service has since resumed, um, says the spokesperson. Users were able to join the waitlist for the service starting at 9 a.m. on Thursday until Monday. Some who tried to join the waitlist received an error message, uh, according to screenshots posted on Twitter. Spots on the waitlist are limited, though users who obtain a spot will receive 10 invites to give out to others. MoviePass is relaunching in beta form on or around September 5th. Um, Three million. That's how many users MoviePass once had in its heyday. So back in 2017, they were a uh, subscription service at $9.99 a month, which is only just $10, for users to go see one movie a day. Its number of users and the number of movies they were seeing actually skyrocketed. Struggling to keep cash on hand, the CEO was fired in 2018, and then Spikes reacquired the... um, the once bankrupt company last year. So I guess the he was CEO, he was fired, and then he came back and rebought it. Cool. 
Uh, then MoviePass Movie Pass announced its new pricing model on Monday. Instead of charging a flat monthly fee, users can choose between $10, $20, and $30 tiers, each that come with a certain number of credits that can be spent on movies. The company says that uh, the service will be rolled out in waves to market across the entire country. Um, and I think this is actually pretty good. Again, people are going back into the movies, um, even though coronavirus is still, quote-unquote, around. Uh, it's still just dying off a little bit, and now you have to worry about the monkeypox and, and all that stuff. Um, but what I'm curious about is that there's a lot of these movie theaters, like AMC and stuff like that. They have their own like rewards program thing. Uh, nothing like that, though. I, in my opinion, I think you have to like watch, you know, ten movies. You get one movie free. You get stuff on your birthday. Yada yada yada. This one is more like a Netflix style, you know, subscription to actually get people back into the movies. And now. Um, I mean, you can actually actually see this as them doing something in VR to where you have a subscription and you can actually experience the the, the behind the scenes of you can hold an NFT experience the behind the scenes of making the actual movie. And then when a movie airs, you get first dibs on it. You get to actually see it air um, through the metaverse, through a VR headset at, you know, whatever um, premiere show. You don't have to actually be at the premiere show you can actually be at home and actually view it there as well you can see other people that's around you and all that stuff uh which is, is i mean that's actually pretty interesting um i'm gonna have to talk to movie pass about that one <laughs> um but yeah so i'm like i said i'm curious to know how it's going to play out with other uh subscription services with other movie theaters and stuff like that i mean this is more like a one-stop shop you can go to any theater versus having to only go to um an AMC theater or something like that. And then the next thing that we have here off the block is going to be tattoos. So tattoos are now coming with sound. So a company called Skin Motion has developed sound wave tattoos, which actually play back sound with the Skin Motion app. Um, so you have a standard sound wave, the original sound wave tattoo design, upload your sound and we'll and we will create the stencil for you. You have the sound wave script. You can turn a word or signature into a sound wave tattoo. You can play back. And then we also have the sound wave symbol, simple symbol tattoos that a sound wave tattoo play back inside the, uh, play back inside the shape. Um, all three of these are actually really, really cool. All three of these are actually really, really wonderful. I can see this happening. Again, if this was like a last voice message for a loved one, and you just want to hear that voice, you know, one more time. Anything can happen to your cell phone. Anything can happen to your device. So you can actually get this tattoo displayed right on you. And from there, you can. Um, uh, and then from there, you can go ahead and scan your tattoo anytime you want to hear that loved one's voice. And then it can actually play back that sound. Uh, so again, step one is just to upload your sound. Step two is to get a tattoo. And then step three is to purchase and activate. Um, oh wow. So I didn't, so they, so they have a whole different, oh, so it's going to be thirty nine ninety nine for the first year and then nine 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 each year after that. Huh? Interesting. So that's how they're making money hand over fist. I thought it was like a one time time thing. You buy your, wow. Well, I guess, I guess that makes sense because they have to, they have to store your sound somewhere. And that summer is going to be on a server. That server is going to be taking up space. The server is going to be taking up electricity. So you, you kind of have to pay for that. Nine 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 for a year. That's not bad. I mean, you can prepay that uh, for ten years, and that's a hundred bucks. Like that's that's not bad. Again, for a loved one to be able to hear their voice again, a hundred bucks for ten years. That's that's not bad at all. Uh, I think they had a video. Yeah, they have a video here. I can actually play and kind of see how it works and looks like. Uh, I'm actually gonna. Uh, can I? Exp yeah, I'm gonna expand it. Oh, so they did it for a, a pet. So I decided that I wanted to get a sound wave tattoo, and my choice was of my dog Bocce, and he has a famous howl that he does. So I decided to have a picture of Bocce and have him howling for my sound wave tattoo. Come here, Bocce. Good boy. This is Bocce. 
and this is Bocce. And this is the sound wave tattoo. So you can kind of see how that works there. Um, and that's actually that's actually a really good tattoo. So you can invert the sound wave. That's interesting. Huh. Uh, and also I want to mention that so in order for you to get this tattoo, it has to be done by an approved like sound wave tattoo artist. So they know exactly what they're doing. They've been schooled and taught on how exactly to uh, do this. Because the last thing that you want is to actually pay for a, like, say, two, three hundred dollar tattoo that doesn't actually work with, you know, Soundwave system in the Skin Motion app and everything. So um, definitely want to make sure that is approved there. So the next thing that I have for you guys today, again, I'm just calling it Spectacular Saturdays because there are a number of spectacular people out here in this world who are doing amazing things. And one guy, I don't even know if I can call him a guy yet because he's only 17 years old. He's still a teenager. But what he did was he broke the Guinness World Record, I think, of being the youngest person to fly around the world, Han Solo. So he's a British Belgian who is 17 years old. Um, and he just broke this record. When did this come out? Two days ago. So, yeah, two days ago, uh, I guess he, when he landed. Uh, he is a teenage pilot who became the first youngest pilot to fly solo around the world. Uh, he landed in Sofia, Bulgaria after a five-month journey across 52 countries. I, I don't remember what I was doing <laughs> when I was 17. I sure as heck wasn't flying for five months around 52 countries. That is, like, amazing. Um, his elder sister, Zara, is the youngest woman to fly solo around the world. Oh, wow. I didn't even... What? I wonder how... I wonder how old she was. Um, yeah, so the previous record holder for flying solo was British pilot Travis Ludlow, who was 18 years old and 150 days, oh, and 150 days old when he completed his journey. Uh, if I recall, this guy actually turned 17 on the day he landed. Um, yeah, I don't remember. I remember reading that somewhere. I can't remember where it was at though. Uh, yeah, but the trip took him from Europe, Asia, Africa, the U.S., across two oceans with his plane launch, touching down in the U.K. at Wick in Scotland and departing from London's Biggin Hill Airport earlier this week. Uh, Mac, who comes from a family of aviators, set off uh, Viz Capital on March the 23rd. March the 23rd is when he set off on that. Uh, the young aviator also said he had slept in a shed beside a runway on an uninhabited island in the Pacific Ocean after a hairy moment passing through the rain and low clouds. Yeah, he plans to keep flying in the future. I'm thinking of something like the Air Force, but I'm nowhere 100% sure on that. Uh, after I finish this, I've just got to focus on school and try to catch up as much as I can. Yeah, because you, I mean, you got the summer, but you missed like two months of the last bit of school. Yeah, this is amazing, in my opinion. I always want to get my pilot's license as well, but uh, never got a chance to, so I might still actually go back and do that, but who knows. All right, so the next thing that I have for you guys here today is retirement. Retirement is now entering inside of the digital age. This company called Accenture, uh, Accenture.com, they are basically at the forefront of it. Uh, they mentioned going to a website Accenture.com forward slash pensions. Every time I go there, they they um, they don't. It's giving me a 404 error, so they don't have anything on there just yet. But I mean, this might be just so new that nothing is um nothing is on it yet. Um, but yeah, so the pensions industry must help to change people's behavior so that they are planning for retirement from an earlier stage in their lives. Embracing digital technology will be central to this effort. The introduction of digital retirement coaches via mobile apps and virtual reality, for example, will help ensure that people are more aware and better education, educated about their future financial needs. So to those who don't know what pensions are, it's something that you get when you work uh, certain jobs, specific jobs. Um, it's kind of like Social Security, 
but it's like on top of social security and it, it's just called a pension. Um, I think mostly police officers, firefighters and stuff like that, they get them because they work for the government, work for the city, you know, wherever they live at and stuff like that. Um, and for their service, they get what they call a pension, which is like, again, social security where you just get money after you retire for, um, for your services, those previous years. Um, and now they're looking to get it more digitized because before, I guess, you know, pensions were done all on paper, but now they're trying to, you know, bring it more onto like mobile apps so they can have more information, more access to it and stuff like that. Uh, because six people check their smartphones every six minutes. 74% seek customer support on mobile devices and 87% retirement system members would use a mobile app, they said. So I guess Accenture may be like one of the first to start bringing pensions over into mobile applications. Uh, I haven't done too much research on other companies of it, just this one here. So if you're looking to get a pension, you may want to uh, think about that because again, everything is going digital. Um, I talked about AI systems before, about going to banks and everything. So you might be able to talk to some sort of AI, uh, artificial intelligence, you know, being entity. I'm not sure what to call them uh, as well. Can you call them a person? I guess you can call them a person, AI person. Yeah, that's fine. Uh, so yeah, so they're redefining value, shifting the volume, have new expectations, changing the, del changing the delivery, so on and so forth. Um, the road to reinvention, they saying are coming in four different waves. Um, the first one is going to be defining it. The next one is going to be enabling it. The next one is going to be imagine. And the last one is going to be sustaining. So they do have videos for all four of those. Uh, I am not going to play them here just now. I think they're each like two minutes long. So I don't want to want to get too deep into that. Um, but yeah, and they have another slideshow here. That you can kind of go through it's 23 pages long for slideshow uh, members are confident about tomorrow's savings i guess this is more about uh accenture itself they can get coached on stuff online learning mobile applications and again you know uh, there's a lot of people who are Oh, members game for extended reality. 66% are willing to use virtual reality fit or uh, virtual reality if it could help them better manage retirement savings. 29% have already used virtual reality for gaming or learning. So again, um, anybody can get a pension as you know, as just long you retired or something like that. Um, or you, I think it's if you've done 30 years at a job. So usually if you're like 20 and you become a police officer at 21, and you do 30 years would make you like 50 something years old. You, I think you can get a pension after that. I can't remember the whole logistics behind it, but um, imagine someone who's like my age, 30 years old, and they're you know getting a pension here soon. They're probably used to VR, they're probably used to gaming and stuff like that versus someone who's already 70, 80, 90 years old. Uh, and everything is, um, uh, is changing. So this would be one of those things that have to change right along with it. Members are open to digital retirement coaching. <laughs> Um, key takeaways, pensions are the new health care, feelings are not facts, digital is the elephant in the room. Members want digital services and they get them in all other facets of their lives, which is true. Digi digital coaching services help members get value from the volume of data out of the um, out there through highly personalized advisory services. Uh, retirement is the next career. <laughs> retirement is the next career. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so let me know what you guys think about that there. Uh, again, I'm not nowhere near the age of retirement and I don't plan on getting a pension. I don't work that kind of job. Um, but it's uh, it's kind of interesting to see how they're taking, you know, all of this. Because I mean, it's, it's something like they've done with real estate already. When you buy a home, you can buy it as an NFT. And it's like, wow, okay, how, how does that process even work? But now they're taking it from, you know, just your own pension, your retirement. Um, and they're going to now start bringing it into the digital world. You can actually probably start seeing you know, them taking your pension, investing it into like some Bitcoin and then giving you Bitcoin cryptocurrency for your, you know, your pension and stuff like that. I would definitely sign up for that. All right. And the last thing that we guys that we have for you guys here today is going to be college. So colleges are now jumping into the metaverse. So college in the metaverse is here. It's higher education ready. 
Um, and this article goes really in depth of what all that entails. It's a pretty long article, so I'm not going to jump too far into it. But as we know, it is the fall semester of 2022 for people going back to college. Some of them are not going back to actual universities. They are going to metaversities. And there are 10 metaversities out there. I'm going to drop this link. I'm going to drop this link into the uh, description as well. But the 10 metaverse universities. And this is, I mean, this looks pretty cool here. So you get to be in the classroom, your teacher's teaching, you get to, you know, be at home while you're there, use an avatar, yada, yada, yada. Um, and uh, where did it show? All right, so here we go. So the announcement said students at Morehouse College in Georgia, University of Kansas School of Nursing, New Mexico State University, South Dakota State University, Florida A&M University, West Virginia University, Southwestern Oregon Community College, California State University, Alabama A&M University, and the University of Maryland Global Campus will be able to use technology to take classes synchronously uh, from anywhere. And I believe this is all done by Victory, XR, and Meta. And they are calling these digital twin campuses. Uh, so again, I'm gonna jump back to this article. And um, um, yeah, so kind of just talks about a metaversity is an immersive virtual reality platform where remote faculty and students don VR headsets and meet synchronously as they would on a physical campus. In some cases, the virtual campus is a digital replica of the institution in which they are enrolled. In other cases, the technology is deployed in face-to-face -face classrooms. In metaverse classrooms, students may learn history while traveling on the Underground Railroad armed with Harriet Tubman's pits pistol, or they may learn about literature while sitting in the judge's bench in the courtroom that was to center that was the center of To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, both both really, really good experiences I would love to have. Um, Because I myself got out of college in 2013, I would go back for this. I, would, I told myself I would never go back to college. Uh, I did kind of go back for my MBA, but this is one of the things that's like, all right, if I if I wanted to go back for another master's, if I want to go back for a PhD, I would have to go through one of these colleges for sure. Um, yeah, so actually Morehouse College in Atlanta, Metaversity pilot program launched in 2021, has data to support Uh, the claim um, that learning comes alive in ways never possible before uh, and creates greater retention of the uh, information that is being learned. But student achievement is only one consideration amongst many. Uh, the way that companies like Google and Facebook exploit people's data should at least raise some questions about whether that's going to go smoothly, of course. Uh, so they talk about the birth of metaversities. They also talk about a social or an anti-social student experience. This is kind of one of the things I want to touch on, which is <clears throat> I believe that everything now again is going digital, but we shouldn't live fully immersed in a digital world. Uh, so being in a virtual college, I mean, there's one thing about going to college. Another thing about living on campus while in college, you, you meet people, you go through that experience of being on your own. You actually kind of live a certain way, a little bit differently. You find out who you are, so on and so forth. So if you're going to be at home in your bedroom, going through college courses, I don't think, in my opinion, that is the best thing to do. Not for all of your courses, at least. Um, I, I don't I don't know. Uh, the technology is cool. Everything is great about it. It's, it makes it a easy thing to do, go to class. I mean, because right now, classes, a lot of classes are done through Zoom. A lot of classes are done virtually and stuff like that. But at some point, we gotta we gotta realize that it's damaging the world to keep people apart from each other, a hundred percent of the time. Like you can you can shop from home. You don't have to go to the grocery stores anymore. You can go to school from home. Uh, you can you don't have to go to the movie theater anymore. You can Netflix and chill. I mean everything that's literally known to man. You can get food delivered right to your doorstep. You barely have to interact with the person who delivered the food. Um, Everything that we can do is now being done at home. It's like we don't have to lose, leave our homes anymore. And that, uh, in my opinion, is not a good thing for, you know, humanity in a whole. Um, 
So you guys can read on their thoughts about this here. Um, because yeah, this creates an entire infrastructure of people not being together actually physically and it's going to be a lot more irresistible than Zoom, which again is true. Despite some reservations, uh, this person acknowledged that the current two dimensional version of online education has been an underwhelming experience for faculty and students to the extent that online education, whether we like it or not, is growing reality. This has the potential to upgrade that with a more immersive experience. Um, building the metaverse with a plane while flying it. This is true because I mean, all of this is, is very new. Uh, so you gotta like <laughs> make it up as you go kind of thing. Um, the metaversity market today and moving forward. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so let me know what you guys think about that there. Um, I think again, it's really cool for universities to do that. I think that it's going to bring a lot more um, I don't say a lot more education. I mean, it's going to reach a lot more people as far as like education and stuff like that. But uh, I think that if you are fully immersed in learning something like say, for example, how to become a mechanic, it's going to be really hard to learn that in a book. But at least when you're in school, you learn it from the book and also can apply it to the car itself. You're right there in front of a car. When the pandemic happened and everything went through Zoom, people were just only learning through Zoom and you couldn't actually physically touch the car. Now with the um, metaverse and everything, you don't need to have to have a car. You can just be inside the metaverse with any car out there in the world or multiple cars side by side. You can actually see the differences between, you know, one car and another car and another car and another car. Um, so it actually brings another sense of immersiveness. But again, emerging inside of that world 100% of the time, in my opinion, is not going to be the ideal thing to do for all of humanity. So uh, I definitely want to know what you guys think about that there. Let me know what you think about all the other articles as well. Just check out the links inside of the description for this video and also link with me on all of my social media channels. All the handles to those are at the bottom of this description uh, for the video. Um, let me know in the comments what you think about this. I plan on continuing doing this, giving you all the information for what's going on in our digital world for a very long time uh, because there is a lot, a lot to learn. And um, yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. Have a wonderful rest of your weekend and I will see you all on Monday.